this special investigative edition of Style TV. I'm your host, Tina Morrison. 46 years ago, legal secretary June Ritter went missing, abducted in broad daylight. Days later, her body found just outside of Kasha, down a sandy lane. This triggered events that left not only our small community, but the entire nation on edge. Marie Dean Arrington, also known as Mean Marie, and for good reason, was convicted of this heinous crime and sentenced to spend the remainder of her days in a cell much like this one. Today we are going to give you an inside look at this heinous crime, one that has been etched in so many people's memories for nearly five decades. We'll meet with Gary Corsair, the last man to interview Arrington before she died, and later we will speak with the detective that investigated her escape as she eluded authorities for almost three years. I think about where did I go wrong? You know, I, I, nobody has to judge me because I judge myself. Gary Corsair will always have the distinction of knowing he was the last outside person to interview Arrington alive. Today, Gary shares with Style TV what he remembers most of this tragic crime. It seemed like each time I talked to her, she gave me a detail or a little bit more detail about the crime that she had never told anybody before. So I think she was trying to tell me the whole story, but that it was gonna have to be in bits and pieces. It was gonna have to be her way, because I think she was judging my reaction. From the way things turn out, I can't blame nobody but myself. And what stood out to me was that the last time I talked to her, she put herself at the scene of the crime and said she was there when June Ritter was killed. Police suspected Arrington early on, but Marie claimed that two men and a woman kidnapped her and Ritter, and she feared for her life. Arrington denied murdering Ritter, and until the day of her death, maintained her innocence in this crime. Oh, I'm just scared. I'm just scared. Of course, in 1968 and throughout the years, she'd always maintained that she wasn't there. But the next last interview, she intimated that she was brought to the murder scene along with June Ritter in an orange grove in South Lake County and then was taken away and brought back to Leesburg. Because when Miss Ritter was killed, Fairfax was no more than from here to that parking lot out there that you came through. Okay? He did that. He did it. And I said, are you saying you know who killed June Ritter and that you're one of the people who know? And she waited about 30 seconds and paused and she said, well, I might as well tell it all. Joe Fairfax came up, he stopped his car right by Miss Ritter's car. He got out, went to Miss Ritter and the other man that was standing there with Miss Ritter that was in the front seat. That's when it happened. I remember she said, well, that's all I'm going to tell you right now. And someday I may tell you the whole story. And I looked at her and said, who could you be protecting? It's been 45 years. There can't be anybody still alive that you could implicate or that could hurt your family. And she said, well, there is. And she said, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Marie Dean Arrington may have killed June Ritter in 1968, but some evidence suggests that she was merely an accomplice. Regardless of her role in the crime, one thing remains clear even after nearly five decades. June Ritter did not deserve to die, and her family didn't deserve to lose their wife and mother. As we stand at the final resting place of June Ritter, we know that she took with her to the grave many secrets, perhaps even the entire truth about the events that transpired that day between her and Marie. But the detective that led the Lowell escape investigation shines some light on Arrington. Here is my exclusive interview with Tolls Bigelow, the investigator that transported Marie back to Florida after her New Orleans capture. The only, I knew she was at the Lowell prison. Uh, that was the only prison in Florida for women at the time. And she had been sentenced to death, and so she was there. And uh, I think it was uh, March the 1st or something, of, 1969, and she escaped. I walked out that front door, <laughs> and they cannot figure out how it happened. There was a number of buildings inside of the prison, and one of them was an infirmary where they took people, and that's where she escaped from. And the hole was probably 
uh, as I recall, maybe this wide and this tall, and the wire had been cut. She would put a towel or things up on, uh, hanging up on the window, and, and apparently nobody ever uh, checked that part of it during the whole time. And uh, that, all of that, that particular morning, uh, uh, during the night, she was gone. Arrington told Gary Corsair that she, in fact, did not leave through the torn window, but through a cell door that was opened for her. So I had to go through the front door. They couldn't find it nowhere else. Anybody that had any, any involvement with her, I believe they were very, very, very concerned about their personal safety because of Marie Arrington's reputation and, and uh, what she might do. You know, certainly everybody was looking for and, and she was on the FBI's top 10, so when they were on that, they really accelerated the, the, the search for her, the FBI, nationwide. She was very close to a minister here in a church, I don't know which one, but somewhere in Leesburg where she grew up. And so they decided that they were going to tap his phone. And apparently, sometime in, in the fall of 1971, she called the preacher, talked about the kids. And they were able, from that, to the FBI, and, and they were able to trace that call to a telephone booth in New Orleans. And that's the first indication where she might be for over two and a half years. After FBI agents apprehended Arrington in Louisiana, it fell to Bigelow to bring her back to serve her time. During the 11-hour ride, she barely spoke. Her silence of not talking, uh, during the latter part of the trip, she finally kind of opened up to the chief, and, and she said the reason she didn't want to eat because she thought that uh, we may poison her. And, and she also didn't want to talk because she was thought that we were going to stop on the side of the road and kill her. Arrington's original sentence was death, but shortly after her December 71 capture in June of 72, that was commuted to life in prison when the U.S. abolished capital punishment. You cannot explain it unless you've been there. Uh, to sit there day after day after day, not knowing when that government is going to sign your death warrant and they're going to put you to death. But there's still people in Lake County that I can assure you still can recall Marie Dean Arrington. You mentioned that name, they know exactly who you're talking about. Even though Arrington died on May 5th of this year, this case may not be closed. I think it lives on as long as there's unanswered questions. It's impossible to tell the story in such a short time. So pick up style for our eight page expose and be sure to visit our website, lakeandsumterstyle.com for 30 sidebar stories that answer questions that have lingered for years. This is the spot where it all started, an abduction that led to a vicious murder that would eventually lead to a nationwide manhunt for a murderess with absolutely no regard for human life. But as this story comes full circle, one must ask themselves, is there ever truly going to be closure, or are those questions that can only be answered from beyond the grave? For this special investigative edition of Style TV, I'm Tina Morrison.